first off, I want to first off, I want to say that uh, Vatican Hill is uh, a, a high place. Pagan uh, pagan uh, were, uh, uh, ceremonies were are, were done on the hill, and I think that's why the the unholy uh, Roman Empire choose it. Secondly, um, the uh, thing with Masons, um, Masons, uh, they're, they're, they're very deceiving. I can tell you about a man who was born in 1908, went to the third grade in Appalachian, Eastern Kentucky, uh, worked hard, worked in coal mines, and had to struggle, had five kids, and was raising them with, uh, you know, your, your typical Appalachian uh, situation, an outhouse, and you, you're, you're struggling just to survive during the Depression. Um, he was lured in uh, through the regular old Baptist church. The Freemasons just infest that. Uh, and this man is my grandfather. Um, I can remember setting in a regular old Baptist church in the 60s and uh, watching them shake hands before a service. And I noticed that some of these men shook hands kind of funny. And so from an early age, I noticed the Freemason handshake. So a man that had basically nothing worked for the gas company in... Um, uh, Eastern Kentucky, uh, all of a sudden they decided to start a coal company. Within a year, they had a whole bunch of money. And when I'm a teenager, I remember hearing uh, my grandfather getting calls from congressmen and senators and the governor of Kentucky. He rose all the way up to a 33rd degree Mason. And what they do is They'll take somebody that has nothing and they'll wave a carrot in front of them with uh, success. And now my family in Eastern Kentucky, they all have a lot of money. Uh, my uncle is a 33rd degree mason. He had a huge construction company. That's how they do it. They infest and take over uh, organizations like the Baptist, the Southern Baptist, the regular Old Baptist. I just, uh, I thought I would tell that little story. Well, it's absolutely true. Baptist, the Baptist churches have been a haven for Freemasons for a long, long time. Freemasons in the Baptist churches are where we got futurism through the Schofield Reference Bible. It was the Baptists who adopted the Schofield Reference Bible. It was my Baptist pastor, when I was a young man, just newly married, seeking God, and thought he found it in a Baptist church, was taught futurism from beginning to end. It was Freemasonry that brought futurism into the Baptist churches and into Protestant Christianity, which has ultimately resulted in ecumenism, the ecumenical reunion of the Protestant churches of all denominations back to the Roman Catholic Church. Freemasonry has served the papacy, has served the Jesuit order loyally, and their, their, their biggest contribution to the apostasy that now controls Christianity today was brought into the Baptist churches through Freemasonry and Schofield reference Bibles. And what Rome rewards her Protestant dutiful servants by making them rich, by putting them in big organizations, giving them opportunities that are denied those who hold to the truth. And yours isn't the only example. Some of the biggest names of televangelists today, the most recognizable names, including that of Billy Graham, 
were contaminated with Freemasons. They're 33rd degree Freemasons. There was even a book written by a man, Jim, uh, whose last name escapes me right now, wrote a book saying that he was invited to become a 33rd degree Freemason. And when he was in the induction ceremony, there was a very, very popular so-called Protestant evangelist who was also uh, made a, was attending the, 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 uh, the ceremony, and it was Billy Graham. And that's why Billy Graham turned his Protestant ministry into an ecumenical crusade for Rome. He was contaminated through Freemasonry. He was contaminated through futurism that was brought to this country by Cyrus Schofield and Freemasonry, brought into the churches by Freemasons who were secretly serving the papacy, the Jesuit order, to destroy the Protestant understanding that it's the papacy that is the Antichrist and teaching us to believe in a future Antichrist, thus exonerating the papacy and making way for a full ecumenical reunion. I, if I took another hour, I couldn't express to you all of the horrors of Freemasonry and futurism and the ecumenical movement. But you can credit wayward Protestants for joining the, the, the Freemasonic Free organization and helping Rome conquer Protestantism. Thanks for your contribution, my friend. I want to tell you an experience that I had on amateur radio more than a decade ago. There was a young man who was speaking on amateur radio, and I was listening to him, and so were a whole crowd of people. It was a young man who was at his grandfather's deathbed, a man that he revered all his life. And his grandfather, before he died, laying on his deathbed in tears, confessed what he had to do to become a 33rd degree Freemason. And he warned his son, his grandson, don't ever become a, a Freemason. And of course, all the Freemasons in the South, this man was a Southerner, and all the Baptist Freemasons of the South began to shout him down and to jam his transmission so nobody could hear him. And knowing that he was telling the truth because of my own research, I keyed up on my transmitter which is full legal limit power, and over them all, I said, shut up and let him talk. He's got a right to tell the truth about Freemasonry. Let him tell the truth. And they shut up, and he told the truth about Freemasonry. Now, he didn't confess his grandfather's sin, but you must understand that in order to become a 33rd degree Freemason, and to ascend to even the higher occult degrees of Freemasonry, you have to earn it. You have to be invited to become a 33rd degree Freemason. And that can only be through loyal, secret service to Freemasonry. And murder is only one of the crimes that Freemasons perpetrate to qualify for that most elite secret inner circle of Freemasonry, the 33rd degree. That's a true story. Albert Pike admitted that Lucifer was their God in, uh, in his book. Yeah, the lower degrees are, in, are purposely held ignorant about what Freemasonry is all about so they can, in clear conscience, go around serving the community and doing good deeds and putting a charitable face upon the most diabolical organization on the planet. Most Freemasons, the lion's share of Freemasons, don't have a clue what they're involved in. They just go about doing their little rituals and serving the community and getting all kinds of praise from the people who are equally deceived about what that organization really stands for. Just as much as they are blessed for serving the order, they are equally persecuted if they betray. And rumors float among Freemasons. Once you're a Freemason, you remain a Freemason all your life, whether you demit from the lodge or not. You're still subject to your oath. 
you swore those oaths in front of witnesses, and those oaths authorize the killing of you if you betray the order. The same is true of Freemate, or the same is true of the Jesuit order, and the same is true of every secret society. Once you beget, once you get beyond the entry level, such as the Blue Lodges of Freemasonry. 